Uxbridge Cemetery damaged by mischief. Uxbridge. Durham police are seeking a suspect or suspects after several burial plots were damaged at a cemetery in Uxbridge earlier this month. According to police, sometime between Saturday, November 10th, and Sunday, November 11th, numerous burial plots at Uxbridge Cemetery, located on Cemetery Road in Uxbridge, were vandalized and damaged. The suspect or suspects entered the property and damaged several monuments and headstones. Police say they have no description of the vandal or vandals at this time, and are asking for the public's assistance in trying to identify the person or persons responsible. Anyone with new information about this incident is asked to call Detective Constable Todorovsky of North Division Community Resource Unit at one eight 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 five seven nine one five two zero extension two three six five. Anonymous tips can be made to Crime Stoppers. At one eight hundred two 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 eight four seven seven. Township Canada Post to hold Prince Albert meeting next week. Dan Kearns, Scugog. Canada Post and the Township of Scugog will be holding a public meeting in Prince Albert early next week about the placement of community mailboxes in the area. The meeting will be held at the Prince Albert Community Hall on Tuesday, November twenty seventh. From 6:30 p.m. until 8 p.m., this is a follow-up meeting to one held on September 25th. According to a township press release, since then, Canada Post has reviewed the comments provided and updated the mapping for locations of the proposed community mailboxes. After the Prince Albert General Store announced it was closing, Canada Post decided to install temporary mailboxes in the Prince Albert Community Hall's parking lot. And then start a review and public consultation process to decide the permanent location of these mailboxes. The public meeting will be an open house format, with township and Canada Post staff on hand to answer residents' questions and receive feedback. Canada Post is making efforts to relocate the mailboxes to their permanent locations before the end of 2018. However, it may take until the spring of 2019. Read the township's release. The release also states. The new boxes will be located at various locations throughout Prince Albert. For more information on their placement, visit www.scugog.ca. <music> Property easement delays culvert project. Expert. Construction on the Brock Street culvert project will recommence in the spring of 2019. The delay is due to the fact the township is still negotiating with the possibility of having to commence an expropriation process for a small piece of property. This property is required as an easement for the culvert. Expropriation is an action the township will use as a last resort to acquire the easement needed for the project. An amicable negotiation is the township's preferred course of action. Various easement, property purchase, and culvert realignment options were studied by engineers before the township selected a modified culvert route. Decision making was hampered by the timing of the negotiations, which occurred during the election period. During the election and post-election period, council was and is in a lame duck position because less than three quarters of the existing council is returning for the next term of council. In this circumstance, legislation in the Municipal Act restricts the current Township Council in their ability to acquire or dispose of property over a certain value or conduct significant financial transactions not previously included in the budget during the remainder of their term of council. The lame duck period ends when the new council is inaugurated on December third. Work on the culvert project will resume once the easement requirement has been acquired by the township, which is anticipated to be by May or June 2019. A lift for local low-income workers and families. New tax credit provides real relief to those who need it most. Kawartha Lakes. The government of Ontario is putting more money back into people's pockets in Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock. By introducing one of the most generous tax cuts for low-income earners in a generation, the Low Income Individuals and Families Tax Credit, also known as LIFT, those who earn thirty thousand dollars or less will pay zero provincial personal income tax on their two thousand and nineteen tax returns. Low-income individuals will save up to eight hundred and fifty dollars per person, and couples will save up to seventeen hundred dollars together. 
This tax break will make a real difference for low-income families and workers in Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock, said MPP Laurie Scott. It will put more money in their pockets and help make life more affordable. In all, 1.1 million people in Ontario will benefit from this tax relief measure. Individual incomes just over $30,000 a year and family incomes over $60,000 a year will see graduated tax relief as well. I am pleased to see that every single dollar of these savings is going to those who need it most, added MPP Scott. The tax credit will take effect on January 1st, 2019. In a few short months, our government has provided more than $2.7 billion in much-needed tax relief to the people of Ontario, concluded MPP Laurie Scott. Tech, tech, technical foul. North Durham Sports. Uxbridge Bruins bounce back for weekend split. Marlowe Stanfield, special to the standard. The Uxbridge Bruins earned a weekend split against Todd Division foes, scoring a win on the road in Port Hope after suffering their first loss of the season on home ice at the Bear Den to the first-place Napanee Raiders. Friday night's contest at the Bear Den more than lived up to its advanced billing, as the Napanee Raiders, the top team in the Todd division, squared off against the Bruins. Uxbridge carried a 1-0 lead into the first intermission, on a goal by Robert Freckleton, assisted by Daniel Wu and Adam Turner. The Raiders turned up the heat in the second period, striking back to take a 2-1 advantage after 40 minutes of play. The Bruins had their claws out in the third period as they quickly battled back to tie the game 2-2, just eight seconds into the period on a Jackson Savory goal assisted by Michael Rennie. The two sides would trade chances throughout the final frame, with both goalies making several sensational saves. However, the Raiders would net the eventual game winner almost four minutes into the final frame. Ryan McConkie had a tremendous evening in goal for the Bruins, keeping the team within striking distance all evening and turning aside 35 of 38 shots fired by Napanee. The Uxbridge Bruins looked to get back to winning ways on Saturday night when they travelled to Port Hope for their lone match of the season at Jack Berger Arena. The Panthers struck first, taking a 1-0 lead 10 minutes into the action. However, the Bruins would answer back with just over two minutes to play in the first period with a power play goal by Michael Rennie, assisted by Toby Cooper and Daniel Giorgio. The two sides would trade chances in the second period, and late in the frame, the Bruins snatched a 2-1 lead on a Jackson Savory power play goal, assisted by Justin Bennett and Aiden Riley. The Bruins looked to put the game away in the third period, but the pesky Panthers provided some late-game heroics, scoring the tying goal with just over two minutes remaining in regulation. A late Panthers penalty gave the Bruins a power play to start the overtime period, playing four-on-3. Oxbridge would pelt the Panthers' net early in the extra frame, finally scoring the game winner almost four minutes into the extra frame when Cooper buried a pass from Giorgio. Jacob Gordon had a busy night in goal for Oxbridge, turning aside 38 of 40 shots, while the Bruins fired 49 shots on goal. Bear Necessities The next home game for the Bruins at the Bear Den is on Friday, November 23rd, against the Georgina Ice at 7.45 p.m. Prior to the game, the Bruins will be hosting a ceremony honoring the Humboldt Broncos. And prior to the game, the Broncos team chaplain, Sean Brandau, will be holding a speaking engagement next door at the community centre, starting at 6.45 p.m. On Saturday, November 24th, the Bruins make their first trip of the season to the sports capital of the Kawarthas to tangle with the Little Britain merchants, with the action getting underway at 7.30 p.m. The Standard Podcast was produced by Greenstream Studio for The Standard Newspaper.